watchers look what i have here today this is indeed the full metal g and this one has been provided courtesy of my cousin-in-law philip so thank you philip for lending me this watch for review on the channel so guys the full metal g these models came out last year around the middle of last year and uh, the demand for them was kind of insane people just went mad buying them up and then uh, you know stocks were low on many retailers and on the secondary market i i thought i saw this go for close to double retail meaning around a thousand dollars and that was just insane at the time and people you know really really liked this uh, they were talk about how this may be the best g-shock of all time uh, and you know I, I think it's really quite controversial and i've got my concerns about why you know this is not as good as it may be and if you want to hear my gripes uh you know skip ahead to the timestamp that i'll put here near the end of the video where i talk about the negatives but you know let's get on to uh, the review of this watch so this is the casio g-shock gmw b5000 d1 or in fact not really the d1 because this is a, a bit of a custom put together with the reverse lcd normally this model comes in the normal lcd uh, the reverse lcd comes in different other models uh, so philip bought this in a boutique and this may be a bit of a boutique custom or exclusive uh, but you know the, the model number is the gmw b5000 uh, is what this is um, so it is a tough solar multi-band 6 with bluetooth is what you're getting in here the msrp is 500 usd you can't get this for a deep discount you know a few dollars off maybe 10 percent off at best i'll put product links down the bottom to what i can find okay guys let's talk about firstly the case the case is amazingly essentially the same size as the original g-shock uh, maybe slightly bigger so 43 millimeters across there between my fingers uh, the thickness is only 13 millimeters thick which is one of the thinner g-shocks yes you can find slightly thinner but not much thinner than this as far as g-shock goes uh, the lug to lug if you will kind of that if you want to consider that lug to lug between my thumbs is 49 millimeters uh, the face height itself so between my thumbs here is 34 millimeters you know just to get uh, your bearings in terms of the size of this watch overall weight is pretty hefty because this is the full metal so 151 gram adjusted with several links taken out if you put all the links on uh, out of the package is 167 grams with everything in there okay let's talk about finishing next all right so you know a brush surface at the top of the bezel there where it says protection g-shock so vertical brushing on the bezel face there and then it moves on to polished surfaces elsewhere you can see all around the case where it normally would be resin uh, they've gone for polished finishing there uh, on the side uh, right just on the side uh, surfaces here it's actually gone for vertical brushing that's what they've done on this watch so you know pretty nice as few transitions between brush and polished surfaces uh, you can see that case back there just let you rest your eyes on the details so it's black and that is indeed a dlc screw down case back that's one of the claims to fame of this particular model that's full metal case with a screw down case back that you can only do with a steel case or metal case uh, they've gone for the usual 200 meter water resistant which is the typical for all g-shock models that you you're going to get your hands on all right let's talk about the display then the display and the face here is a negative lcd as you can see there it is an stn so a super twisted a pneumatic lcd which supposedly increases uh, the clarity and the viewing angle of the lcd display uh, this is of course in the classic retro style layout you know including brick pattern around the face there uh, the only difference between this and the uh, old retro stuff or the main difference is that the box on the top right corner is actually a dot matrix it's not just a simple lcd it uh, can actually use that to scroll you know letters and numbers and patterns the actual glass here is uh, mineral glass right that's fairly typical for you know any g-shock under 500 dollars in fact uh, you know almost all of their range except for the top range it comes with mineral glass uh, some of the lower models in fact come with acrylic 
uh, and then the backlight here is LED. You know, they haven't said it's EL or electroluminescence, so they actually said it is LED. Uh, I'll, I'll just put some screenshots here for you to see how it looks like in the dark. But uh, here, I want to show you that you can see because it's a reminder day, it actually blinks red after you turn it on. That's because uh, I've set a reminder here, so that, that's kind of a warning me that there is something on this day. And I've just put the message there. Perth watch. So there's a reminder function which we'll go into when we talk about the Bluetooth app. All right, let's talk about the module in here. So this is Tough Solar, the negative uh, LCD display quartz multifunction module 3459. That's the module in this watch. So it does have multi band 6 radio control. So atomic time uh, terrestrial antenna syncing is what that is. If you're in those zones, I'm not in Perth, but for most of the population in the world, you should be within reach of one of the antennas. Uh, the display has the classic upper part where it's got the uh, day there and the date display, as well as you know modes that you can see on the upper part there where the dot matrix box will use and the lower time for the main time display, the lower part of the display there. Uh, now just going into the modes here. So this is timekeeping, of course, and in timekeeping, you can click that button and it will get a, a sync with the watch. And uh, my, my phone is nearby, so it will actually right now do a time sync with my phone. So that's pretty cool, right? So that's an okay there. This one's a setting button. This one's a light that I've shown you, right? That button up the top here. And then that's, of course, the mode button with Casio homology. All right, world time. Uh, in this case, you don't cycle through all 48 cities. You can set five different time zones uh, and, you know, you can go through them. So, you know, here I've got Sydney, Los Angeles, you know, New York, you know, basically five different cities you can uh, set. And in this watch, you can actually set a custom time as well. So in this case, I've selected a rural town in Western Australia, Geraldton. And you can see the name scrolled across the top there. You can get, you can actually come up with your custom names, which is, uh, you know, one of the things you can do with the Bluetooth app. Okay, next up, five daily alarms with snooze function. Okay, so let's just show you, you know, time signal setting and the snooze function there, let you hear it. Okay, so not very loud, that's just fairly typical. Uh, stopwatch, which is 1 100 second uh, for I think the first 60 uh, minutes is 1 100 and then it goes on to one second counting up to 24 hours stopwatch there. Uh, the next thing is the timer, which is one second countdown. You can set that up to 24 hours uh, and that's it. That's it. Nice and simple. Uh, battery life is 10 months on typical use. I think that means you use the light one, uh, you know, three times a day uh, and you, you're not going to run it too much. Uh, if you run it on power save, you know, in the darkness without charging, it's rated at 22 months on the cell in here. Uh, it doesn't have a power indicator. That's one of the gripes I have with this. You have to use the app to look at the power indicator. So right now, I'm just going to show you the app now. Let's just get it up on screen. Okay, so with the app, this is the Bluetooth uh, or G-Shock connected app. Just going to connect the watch up by holding down the button here. Okay, so connects up nice and simple actually I got to say this this app has been very pleasingly simple to use okay that's it it's connected up and then you know you can set your time zone so if you go into a city for example there you can actually change it and it's got 300 default cities right you can see the city names there around Australia 300 default cities but you can also set a custom city by using a map and selecting your spot so I've got those five cities there that I've chosen uh, and you can change any of them to anything you want. All right, next up is actually uh, the kind of uh, time and place notation. So every time you sync the watch, it actually stores the time and uh, you know the, the coordinates actually. So let's go to the last place. You can see it actually details where you know the exact place was. Uh, that's my workplace where I am right now. Okay, and then next up is just other settings you can do. So most of this actually you can do in the watch itself. This just gives you a convenience. The only thing you can't do in the watch is actually the reminder setting, which, you know, you can see I've set the first one as active. So I just wrote there Perth watch and that's on. And in the reminder, you can see if I press that, it actually comes up. Oh, actually, that's just disconnected the app when you press the button on the watch, but you can press that setting setting button and it scrolls up Perth watch there 
as the reminder. That's just a daily reminder. It's not actually a specific time and alarm. It just comes on during the day to remind you that something has happened. And you can tell that something is happening today because that between the 20th November the 29th day, you can see that dot is blinking. That's that's a little notation there. Okay, so that's the reminder function and the app that I've shown you. Um, moving on to the bracelet. Okay, so this is, uh, of course, a solid steel bracelet they've gone for here. Uh, it does have brushing along the top here, right? That's the finishing. Uh, along the side is brushed as well, a push pin for adjustment, and it's got a metal clasp, which is pressed metal housing. Okay, show you that housing. It's got four point micro adjusts, uh, but it's got relatively solid deployment arms there. Okay, that's really it. And let's just show the watch on the wrist for you guys. There we have it. Yeah, there we have the full Metal G GMW B5000D1 on my 17 centimeter wrist. And one thing I'll point out is that those first lugs are not flexible and they kind of sit pretty high. And that's a bit unfortunate because it makes this watch sit a little bit awkwardly on the wrist there. But you know, that's really what I'm putting up with here. Okay, so that's the description of the entire watch. What are the pros? You know, what have I loved? about this watch so you know it is actually the full metal g right an utterly modern update of the classic 1983 retro design with a full modern feature set which they have amazingly managed to you know squeeze into this this small size case in a 43 millimeter original size and they've put all that technology in there including the new bluetooth right it's the first full metal square G-Shock that they've done, you know, accordingly. Uh, and, and it also has that lovely DLC screw in case back. It's just a very cool design. And, you know, apparently it confers some serious street credibility, right? Because, it, it, you know, you have to splurge out for this. It's not a cheap G-Shock. Um, and it's just got such a cult following already in the short time it's already come out. And it's got the usual tough design. You know, it's got the resin uh, uh, kind of buffer around here for the G-Shock resistances, 200 meter water resistant, and the pleasant Casio homology. You know, all these buttons you're familiar with. In fact, all those notations you're kind of familiar with, right? That's all, usually the light, that's usually the mode, that's the setting, and that's usually, you know, start, stop, or reset for the, the stopwatch, as you may. And, you know, in terms of square G-Shocks, you know, I, I still feel that everybody uh, who is into watches should uh, own a square G-Shock of some form, you know, a DW5000 Descendant. Right now, this is the top of the pile. This may not be the one you splurge out for, but I think there's no doubt that this is the top of the pile of square G-Shocks. What I don't like about it, you know, the concerns, the things why I think this isn't as good as why so many people think it is. Uh, firstly, I'll say that this model, the LCD display, again, not the most readable, right? Optimal is about 20 degrees down and you can see it clearly there but you know other angles it kind of fades a bit right not not fantastic in terms of visibility something that comes with uh, negative lcds overall it is a pretty hefty package 150 grams look my frogman which also has a you know a solid steel case is only 119 grams this is significantly heavier and you know one thing i've pointed out is that first link profile these first links are not very flexible and hardly any flexibility and they just stick out a little bit too far, making it awkward on the wrist. That's, that's really my experience with this over the, the week and a half that I've had this so far. Uh, personally, I've never been sure about the logic of a metal G-Shock. Uh, you know, the G-Shocks are designed to take knocks, uh, supposedly. That's why the resin makes sense. When you have metal, you can see there my cousin has already put a few knocks on it and it's going to scratch up if you use it as a G-Shock is meant to, you know, taking knocks. So, you know, I've never been sure about the steel, which is why I haven't owned a steel G-Shock anytime. You know, does it really offer a whole heap more for the asking price? It's asking for 500 USD, remember? Uh, you know, I'm not sure, you know, does it give you that much more because of the steel case and because of the Bluetooth? You know, in comparison, you know, this may be a bugbear within, uh, you know, Casio itself, you know, a model like this one. So this is my, uh, GWM 5610 BC with the composite bracelet, which is fantastic. You know, what, you know, how do you compare these? You know, I'll just do a very quick 
uh, side by side, right? So this one is a resin case, right? Not the steel case. So yes, you're going to pay more for the steel case, but you know, that's not groundbreaking. You know, steel watches are a dime a dozen, right? So what else do you get? Okay, so for, for the better model, the more expensive model, you're getting, of course, uh, the Bluetooth with the app. So, you know, you're getting the benefits of that, meaning you can set the world time cities and you can set those reminders. Everything else, well, is it that special? You're really only getting the time setting where you don't have the atomic time sync otherwise, which is great in Perth, but elsewhere in the world, you're going to get that AT sync from the multiband 6 anyway, right? So, you know, let me know, is that enough for you? You know, is the Bluetooth worth enough that you will bother using that app very regularly? I probably wouldn't, to be honest, if I owned this watch, I'd be happy just to use it on itself. And that's it really, in terms of the, the advantage of this one, apart from the, the steel case itself. Uh, what, you know, does this watch have anything better? In fact, I think it does. I think the status indicators on the screen is actually better. So down the bottom of the screen there, you can see there's a power indicator, low, medium, high for the battery, and also the time signal, snooze, and alarm indicators there. Yes, this does have it in, uh, you know, icon form here, but I, I think this is a better way of doing it. And I wondered why they didn't keep that for this model, you know, because I really think that's a great update to the display for, for a tough solar watch with that battery indicator. That's just my uh, it, you know, my, my own opinion anyway, you know, in terms of what else it has to, to be equal, well, they're both Tough Solar, they're both multi-band 6, and the alarm, stopwatch, and timer functions are exactly the same. So for $200 or less for this watch, you know, is, you know, is it worth it upgrading to $500? Let me know, you know, I have my concerns about, you know, wanting to spend that much more for ostensibly maybe not a whole lot more function and watch. Okay, so guys, that's my uh, review of this GMW B5000 Full Metal G. Uh, lots of good things about this, a lot to like, but you know, also got my concerns about its, you know, uh, the value proposition for a G-Shock of this size and of this function. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, uh, do consider subscribing. I put out new content every week, always aiming to be objective and biased about all things serology. Thank you again for sticking with me, and as always, I'll catch you guys next time.